Networking is key to growing professionally. And it's also key to maximizing your success, no matter what seat you're in or what seat you aspire to sit in. And today, we're going to talk about authentically networking. When you say the word network, most people bristle because so many people think networking seems inauthentic. It seems like you're trying to hobnob with people. You're trying to brown nose with people. Most people say networking is because it doesn't feel real. Well, networking can be as authentic as your connecting with somebody you've known forever. So when you go into a room and you're going to attempt to network with people, first of all, bring all of who you are into that room. And if you're going to be authentic, that means number one, you have to know who you are. So spend some time saying, who am I? Most of us pre-pandemic, we failed to check in with ourselves to say, who am I today relative to who I was in 2012? Who am I today relative to who I was in 2018 when we were in 2019? And if you haven't checked in with yourself recently, stop, please do so. Because there isn't a person on the planet that hasn't been impacted and changed in some way because of the global pandemic that we all went through. It was truly a globally shared experience. There isn't a person on the planet that doesn't feel some kind of way witnessing the social unrest that we saw certainly in this country and frankly around the world. Who are you today? Know who you are. The second key to bringing all of you into any room is to understand and embrace the fact that we're all multifaceted. There is not just one you. There is a frivolous you. There is an argumentative you. There is a pensive you, a listening you, an inquisitive you. We're all multifaceted. Own that. And then the third key to authentically walking into any room is now you relax because now you can meet people wherever they are. Because you are not preoccupied with trying to speak or behave or show up in a certain way, you can be free to feel the energy that's in the room and decide in that moment which facet of you will authentically connect with the people that you will meet in that room. Is it the inquisitive you? Will it be the listener? Will it be the athletic person? Will it be the singer? In my case, will it be the speaker? Will it be the mother? Will it be the golfer? Which part of you is going to authentically connect with the people that you will touch in that room? Now, if you feel at all a little inhibited or a little intimidated by all of the people that are in that room, leverage your strengths. If you're like me, you're goal oriented. So when I would walk into a room of 500 people in a ballroom and I would think about networking with the people in that room, at first it felt overwhelming. But then I leveraged my strengths. Carla, the goal oriented person, she accomplishes goals. So I set a goal and said, I wanna make sure I connect with 10 people. And in the beginning, again, it was intimidating. I just said, let me get 20 business cards. Then it was, let me get 20 business cards, but have a three or four line conversation with five of those people. Then it became, I'm going to genuinely connect, have a conversation with 10 people in the room. And once that became my goal, I accomplished it every single time. How? I said, let me go up to someone and find a point of commonality. What's the common point? You're in the room together. You all came to the same conference. So you can start there. Hey, is this your first time at the conference? This is my first time at the conference. Or I'm a veteran at this conference. Is this your first time? If it's both of your first times, now you say, so what brought you to the conference? Why did you come? and then you share why you came. If you're at lunch, you said, what did you enjoy about the morning? Who was your favorite speaker? If you're at the end of the day, who was your favorite speaker throughout the day? Let me tell you a point that really struck me. Here's what I heard that person say. What's on tap tomorrow? What breakout sessions are you going to go to tomorrow? Here are the ones that I'm thinking about. Oh, by the way, where's your headquarters? 
Do you live there? Have you always lived there? Are you native? I've now given you easily eight or 10 questions that you can exchange with that person on the other side of the conversation. And lest you spend too much time with one person, now you say to that person, well, I know it's a big conference. There's a lot of people for you to interact with and meet. I'm gonna let you enjoy the rest of this event or this cocktail party or this lunch, and I'm gonna move on, and I hope to see you in the afternoon, or I hope to see you tomorrow. And then you move on to the next person, and you do exactly the same thing. A really great place to connect with people is when you're standing in line to either get a drink or when you're standing in line to get food. You can talk about the food, you can talk about how long the line is, you can talk about how many people are around the bar, you can talk about the next event. Here's a tip that might make it less intimidating for you. People are just as afraid of you as you are of them. You'd be surprised how many people that are in the same position as you, a little bit intimidated and a little bit afraid to speak to someone. So you make it easy on both of you if you break the ice. Now, every now and then you might run into a curmudgeon that really doesn't want to speak. Well, everybody understands and understands that profile and who those people might be, especially upon meeting and interacting with them. Then you simply move on to the next person. But you make it a goal to connect with people and then post the event when you look at the business cards that you have collected or you look at the names that you've written down, you pick three or four of those people that you're going to invest in and build that relationship beyond that particular event. And the beauty of technology today is that you can stay very well connected with people without even having to meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. You can say, hi, Mariah, it was great to see you at the XYZ conference in January. Now you send another email in March or April and say, happy spring, Mariah. I can't believe a whole quarter has gone by since we met at this event. Here's what's been going on with me. Would love to catch up and see how things are transpiring with you. Now you send another email in June. Hey, I can't believe we are two quarters throughout this year. Here's what's happening with me. When are you coming to New York? Here's when I'm thinking about going to Charlotte. Now it's September. Hey, just want to check in with you. Can't believe we're three quarters of this year already done. We're already through it. Uh, what do you have going on? What are you thinking about for the holidays? Now you send another one in December. Happy holidays. You never have to speak to that person to stay connected. You have now had four interactions with them over the course of the year. Now January comes again. It will be a very easy connection and conversation when you see each other again at that same conference or if you have to call that person and ask for something specifically. They may not have ever answered you, but they read the email, you connected, and it won't feel like a cold call. That is how you can authentically connect with people and keep those relationships alive after you have met with them. Be intentional about the connections, leveraging technology, and just bringing you to the table. It's enough, it's extraordinary. Go get them.